following presentation was recorded live for the International Association of Square Dance Callers 21st Annual Convention. This is tape number seven, Teaching Smooth Dancing. Yeah, if you find a place to sit out there, gang, and uh, get yourselves comfortable. We do have handouts up here. You can pick them up now after the session is over. We have, pardon Don't, don't talk to me. I'm busy. Well, hi, Chuck. <laughs> All right. On the far end, we have Ken Rattucci. Uh, Ken will not be with us today. Uh, they did some shuffling on the program, and uh, I understand that he did advise them uh, that he wouldn't be able to be available for this. But filling in for Ken, we have Jerry Junk. <laughs> didn't didn't they send you down to fill in for Ken Rattucci? <laughs> it's gonna gonna be one of those days, huh? Okay, I'm Daryl Clendenin from Portland, Oregon, and Apache Junction, Arizona, and our first panelist today, and our only panelist today, <laughs> from Rockledge, Florida, have a nice hand for Mr. Jerry Reed. Thank you, Daryl. It's, uh, it's good to be here, and it's also good to see so many folks here. It's always encouraging, especially when we take into consideration our theme this year of reach out and teach someone and uh, of course today is uh, teaching smooth dancing whoops <laughs> first we caught him in to come up here and then we try to try to kill him but it's good to be here and it's good uh, good to see so many folks interested in teaching smooth dancing how many of y'all drove up here a few drove oh, <laughs> yeah we, we came up uh, was it I-5 that came out of Seattle? Man, alive. I thought I thought I-95 had a lot of traffic on the East Coast. Man, that, that sucker was wall to wall. As we, were, we saw a couple of accidents, unfortunately, but it would gravel along, and of course it's bumper to bumper all the way. But as we're going along, I kept looking in the rearview mirror to see, you know, how traffic's doing, make sure I'm not getting in any kind of bind. And I see this ambulance way behind us. Just coming up, you know, traffic's going at like 65 or 70. This, this ambulance is passing everybody on the left-hand side of the road. And I said, well, you know, we got to do what we can do. But I couldn't get over anything, so I just stayed. Here he comes. As he goes by, I noticed the back door of the ambulance was open. I said, man, that's not too good. And as he got down the road a little bit, I saw this object come flying out of the ambulance. And I looked, and I said, that's one of those little cooler things, you know, like they carry hearts and stuff in, you know. I said, man, this isn't good. So I pulled over and, and uh, opened it up, found it and opened it up. And sure enough, all this dry ice stuff come whizzing out of there. And I looked inside. You'll never guess what I saw inside there. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. They don't let those go. <laughs> it was a human toe, a human toe. I couldn't believe it. I looked and I said, what am I going to do now, you know, because obviously this is pretty important. Well, my wife, Del, is a nurse, and fortunately she knew what to do. She said, call a tow truck. <laughs> so we did, and, and here we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talk about smooth, yeah. Um, when uh, when uh, I was contacted about being on the panel and uh, I talked with Daryl and I talked with Ken, I thought that uh, what I would like to do is to present some information uh, that is generic to teaching, uh, information that is important to us as teachers and as instructors. Many of you who, of course, have been calling and, and, and teaching and instructing for many years, uh, this may uh, seem like old hat. Uh, but hopefully you will be able to gain something from that. But since our theme is reach out and touch someone, I thought it would be 
appropriate and, and important to have this kind of information somewhere on the tapes. And, and that's why I decided to do this. Um, so if you have any questions as we're going along, uh, please uh, stop me. We'll talk about it. Uh, we don't have a whole lot. Of, I don't have a whole lot of time, uh, but uh, we can talk about it or at the end. Of course, the subject today is teaching smooth dancing. And I looked up in the caller curriculum for caller training and found the following definition of smooth dancing. is dance action which allows the dancers to move comfortably without abrupt changes in direction or excessive stops with steps that match the beat of the music. Our pre presentation today is designed to give you some tips of how to teach uh, smooth dancing skills to the dancers. Many things have been said about teaching, some of them not too nice. If you, first of all, I would like to say that teaching should be fun, and that is true. If you enjoy teaching, that's great. If you don't like teaching, fake it. If you detest teaching, don't do it. Mood, your mood can be projected and detected through your microphone. If you are enthusiastic, they will know it. If you are having fun, they will know it. If you are confident, they will know it. If you are not having fun, they will know it. And if you wish you were somewhere else, they will know it. Teaching is easy. This is not true. This may have been true at one time, but not anymore. Today there is so, just so much to learn and to teach during a square dance class. We can teach smooth dancing skills to experienced dancers and to new dancers. In some ways, teaching experienced dancers is easier than teaching new dancers. In some ways, it is harder. If we teach experienced dancers, they should already be familiar with the dance action so they can concentrate on the aspects of smooth dancing that we're trying to teach. If we're teaching new dancers, if we're teaching new students, then they will be in a learning mode and, and will be more receptive to the, to the uh, smooth dancing skills that we try to present. Plus, we should have more time to provide repetition of the uh, smooth dancing skills we present. Teaching new dancers is not only one of the most important, but also one of the most difficult of our jobs. That is, difficult to do correctly. There's a tremendous amount of material to teach and learn in today's square dance class. This includes the dance action, not necessarily the definition, but the dance action of the moves, the etiquette of dancing, organization information, and of course, smooth dancing skills. Unfortunately, many uh, dancing, many class situations do, do not provide us enough time to cover all of that material. Something has to be dropped by the wayside. Unfortunately, what is usually dropped is etiquette, organization information, and unfortunately, smooth dancing skills. We teach them how to solve the puzzle, but we don't teach them how to dance smoothly. What we hope today is to provide some information, some tips, techniques of how to include smooth dancing skills when we're teaching new dancers and experienced dancers. P teaching people to do something is not an easy task. Teaching them properly is even harder. How many ex-students are there out there who would have become enthusiastic and supporting dancers if they had had a competent teacher? How much of our dropout problem could be reduced if we had more competent teachers? A teacher should be familiar not only with the what of we, what we are to teach, but also how people learn what it is that they know. The definitions, styling tips, and teaching information, uh, timing information on all the moves through the advanced program is available through the uh, Caller Lab office. Therefore, the what of we are what we are to teach is readily available. There's a couple of tools that are also available uh, to help us in our teaching and calling, and this, these are the standard applications books. Uh, presently produced are the mainstream standard applications and the plus standard applications. These books provide the most frequently used formations and arrangements of the plus and the mainstream calls. These books 
can be used by the uh, teacher of new dancers to determine which formations and arrangements are used most frequently and therefore should be taught first. The how of teaching square dancing is not nearly so easy to come by. Most callers do not get um, uh, formal information, formal training of how people learn what it is that they know. Most of us who get that information get it from outside of our caller training experience, perhaps on the job, in the military, some other avenue. But the how of how, peop how people learn is very important. I'd like to couple, cover a couple of those uh, points. First of all, how dancers learn. First of all, learning to know something is different for most people from learning to do something. People who we learn to know something through observing, by watching, by listening, and by reading. Since different people learn in different ways, we should use different methods of those, of those three methods to uh, help in our teaching. All of them can and should be used during a uh, square dance class. Learning to do something is different from learning to know something. Most people learn to do something through one of three methods, and that is practice, practice, or practice. And what type of practice? Perfect. Practice. Getting ahead of myself. That's later. Uh, we, we provide repetition. We provide practice. We teach them how to do something. We repeat, repeat repetition and they, until they uh, can respond automatically. This always brings a, a, to a story to mind. Before I... <laughs> No, no tow trucks now. <laughs> uh, before I moved to Florida, I, l I was living in Virginia, Virginia and uh, during one of my square dance classes, I have a, had a gentleman who turned 74 years old. Now, this was before the days of, of the snowbirds, so having anybody 75, 74 years old in a, in a square dance class was rather unique to me. And John and I would talk and, and, uh, uh, during the class and after class, and just a wonderful gentleman. And we were talking one night, and I said, well, John, you know, um, you know how we learn to, to dance? It's just through repetition. We practice. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, you've heard the old saying, practice makes perfect. And he said, yeah, Jerry, I have heard that. But that's not really true. He said, it is true that perfect practice makes perfect. And that's why we need to provide perfect practice, error-free repetition during our teaching. Now, how people learn. First, learning by observation, by watching. Many, in many times, an effective demonstration is an effective way to introduce new moves. I think this is particularly true during the early stage of the dancer's experience. So this is true because they, they can learn in two ways. First, they will hear the definition by the caller then they will see the demonstration by the dancers. So they're learning by listening and they're learning by observing, by watching. I think the use of a demonstration to show one or two couple moves is much more effective than moves requiring all four people. This is because of the difficulty, the complexity of the moves and the difficulty in trying to track all eight people uh, within the demonstration. So I think that one or two couple Demonstrations by one or two couples is much more effective, and I've, I've prepared a, demon, a uh, handout, and unfortunately we ran out. Um, I didn't get these into the home office in time to uh, get uh, the massive uh, production done, so I did some on my own, and again, I'm glad to see so many people, but I'm sorry that I ran out of a uh, handout. So if you didn't get one of these, uh, see me after the presentation, and I'll uh, try to arrange to get you one. I've, I've crossed through on the Mainstream Plus program list those calls which I feel cannot be shown by one or two couples. And you'll notice that there's some pretty big uh, uh, numbers there. 71% uh, of the basic, basic program, 82% of the Mainstream program, and 53% of the Plus program, I feel, can be taught with one or two couples. 
you may question load the boat uh, after the presentation we can talk and I'll show you how I do that second learning by listening the art of an effective caller teacher often lies in the ability to describe in the simplest terms possible exactly what the dancers are to do uh, this this skill is particularly important if the caller decides to teach without the aid of a demonstration the caller must paint in the eyes and the mind's eye of the students exactly what they are expected to do the teachers verbal tools are the key words which tell the dancers immediately and in no uncertain terms exactly what to do these terms include go stop walk forward four paces face right and many many others unfortunately there are times when the caller the instructor can use terms which make perfect sense to them but have no meaning at all to the students I did come up with an example of that which I'm not going to go into here but uh, something like uh, about forget it uh, I, I didn't even understand it after I wrote it down. I said what is that but uh, the, the point is that when we use these verbal tools uh, it helps to get input from your partner or from a dancer that you trust or tape it yourself and listen uh, whether or not the verbal tools that you use uh, are um, make make sense um, next learning by reading I think I want to also point out at, 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 at this point that there's an ongoing project I think Keith Ripito is collecting the teaching tips and uh, I would encourage each of you to contribute to that project and to review the results of that project that should provide us a very valuable tool in our search for verbal tools uh, that do work next reading by read listen learning by reading uh, there are some dancers although not very many who can learn most of what they need to know simply by learn reading definitions and by studying diagrams and pictures now even for those dancers who don't have that unique ability and, and I grant you it is a very unique uh, ability the uh, if we provide written materials uh, definitions timing information uh, it's very advantageous to uh, all of our students and it's particularly helpful if there are pictures and diagrams involved here the uh, sets and order handbooks come in very very handy are they still sets and order handbooks I guess that's what I've always called them so I think they still are finally learning by experience and repetition since learning the square dance involves a motor skill the only way to really learn that skill is through repetition and practice and what kind of practice perfect practice error-free repetition uh, typically this will start with a talk through and then a walk through by the by the caller during this talk through and walk through that's where we can provide smooth dancing tips not only when we provide how they do the action that they take the right hand and they pull by and they courtesy turn we can include smooth dancing tips during that teaching phase and especially with new dancers because they are in a learning mode they're ready to learn they're receptive to what we're teaching so that's the perfect time to include smooth dancing tips it has been said that people learn by their mistakes and that may may very well be true in some instances but I don't believe it's true in, in a learning a motor skill such as square dancing because we learn to dance we learn to respond automatically through repetition if that repetition is flawed then what we learn will be flawed as well finally teaching smooth dancing uh, I looked up again in the collar training curriculum for the components of smooth dancing and there are seven they include timing tempo body position hand availability anticipation accuracy of execution and kinesiology kinesiology includes body movement body relationships and the design of the moves some of these factors such as design of the moves are beyond the control of the callers and the dancers some of them are controlled totally by the caller such as uh, tempo 
controlled totally by the caller. Some are influenced, most in fact, are influenced greatly by the caller. It is very difficult to dance with proper timing if the, if the caller does not provide proper timing. Some of them can be learned, improved, and practiced by the dancers, primarily anticipation. We've always said for years, don't anticipate, don't anticipate. For years, dancers have been anticipating. Now. <laughs> have they been doing what we've not asked them to do or have we been asking them the wrong thing I think it's a case of both there are cases certainly where we do not expect we don't want the color the dancers to anticipate we certainly don't want them to be able to anticipate exactly what we're going to call next but there are times when we do expect them to anticipate and that anticipation is what allows them to dance smoothly, to take inherently unsmooth sequences and make them smooth. In the sequence, such as square through three quarters, there's your corner, do a left alamand. The, the key word, there's your corner, will clue them to adjust their body to do that left alamand very smoothly. Another example that, that is, is such a classic, we've, I don't know, how many of y'all have ever called uh, from a zero box, touch a quarter, walk and dodge, partner trade. Anybody ever called that? A few, a few people. Well, it's probably not as popular where you call it, where I call it. <laughs> Cheryl says, is there something else you can do? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but the, the point is that, and, and everybody says that that is so unsmooth because the ladies dodge, and then the ladies flip over there for a partner trade. In, prepar in preparation for this and some of the other work that I've been doing, I ran an experiment with, with one of the clubs that I call for. And I asked them, I said, I'm going to call a series of moves. And when it feels unsmooth, let me know. Or think about as you're, as you're dancing and when we get done, let me know if there are any points that are unsmooth, that feel uncomfortable. And I called it. I called, touch a quarter, walk and dodge, partner trade. And I got, then I did a right and left through. And then I stopped and I said, did any of that feel unsmooth? And they said, no. And that puzzled me because I know that the ladies slide and then flip back over. And the reason that I think that that happens is because of anticipation. They anticipate that that partner trade is going to come next. So the ladies slide, and then they slide right back over. So anticipation is very, very uh, important and is a very powerful tool uh, in our search for uh, smoothness. The, uh, th this this uh, uh, factor of anticipation can be employed in many moves, such as if we have all four ladies chain. The gents can be uh, taught to anticipate the arrival of that opposite lady. Be ready to courtesy turn her. The same thing applies to many calls. Flutter wheel, reverse flutter wheel, Dixie style to an ocean wave, teacup chain, and many, many others. Now a little bit, uh, Daryl's going to get up uh, a square or have a square. Uh, available, and we'll try to show uh, some of these techniques. I'm sure that Daryl has a has a wealth of those. Um, that's all. <laughs> Talk about putting you on a spot. Uh, but Jerry Jerry told me to say that. So. <laughs> uh, that that's all that I really have uh, have time to present right now. And I think a little later on we'll talk about some uh, teaching techniques. Any uh, uh, comments or suggestions about yes? To the mic, please. Yeah, we're on tapes. If I can't answer any questions, we'll turn it over to Ken, and he'll he'll take care of all. My husband, excuse me. <laughs> My husband teaches our dancers to anticipate. He says that I want you to anticipate something is going to happen, and don't but don't execute your anticipation anticipate but don't execute your anticipation because he has found over the years when he has drilled into them do not anticipate do not anticipate do not anticipate they shut down 
they quit thinking. They're waiting to hear the next call. And instead, uh, if they keep their momentum going forward, and, and people tell me this all the time, they think I've got Marty's calls memorized. I don't. It's just that I'm constantly moving my feet, shuffling in a forward type motion, and when he's calling, I'm right there, and people think I, I know what he's calling, and, and I don't. So if you just have that constant momentum, and it is the anticipation, just don't do it until you hear it. <laughs> That's a very good point, and, and uh, that, that, that anticipation that I'm alluding to here uh, applies mainly to the inactive dancers. They shouldn't, uh, and, and they, can, they can be introduced to the idea of not just standing in one spot, but shuffling their feet or, or be ready with the right hand or the left hand, whatever is required, or uh, to anticipate uh, what that next action will require of them. Any other comments? Thank you for your attention, and I'll turn it back to, yes, to the microphone, please. I think the competency of the dancer is a very important item. And if you have one person in the square that you're carrying, everybody's trying to carry, of course your timing is off. So we have to try to teach competency, and that's what you're working on. Thank you. Thank you. Very good point. Uh, and again, um, if, if, if we are, uh, can provide uh, very good, competent, in-depth teaching and practice, practice, what kind of practice? Perfect practice. Uh, to the heads and the sides. You've got to get everybody involved. Thank you. Daryl? Thank you, Jake. All right. We'd like our demonstration square up, if we could, please. These folks have been practicing all morning so they can execute perfectly. And uh, filling in for Ken Rattucci on a last-minute notification. How about a nice hand for Jerry Junk? Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. As um, I was preparing for what I was going to talk about at this session in the last ten minutes, um, one of the things that I have on my resume is I like smooth flowing dancing. I don't really like to call that. That's the way I like to dance. Consequently, I try to call like I like to dance. This convention is dealing with reach out and teach someone, teaching dancers. In my estimation, the best way to teach dancers is don't let them fail. I think most dancers, if they break down, it's because we've set them up to break down. Smooth dancing, body flow, to me, eliminates mistakes. It takes them away from the dancers. And I think it doesn't matter what you call, uh, you need to address the issue of smooth dancing. What sets dancers up to succeed? You want to set dancers up to succeed, especially the people that... I don't want to call that side. I want to call this side. Yeah, but I use it. I think we set people up to fail more than we set them up to succeed, especially when you call lessons. The last thing you want that square to do is break down. So I think you have to set them up that they can't miss. If you've ever danced to Marshall Flippo, I use his name whenever I talk about setting people up to succeed. Flippo is the best. And in my estimation, there are three things that you have to be aware of when you're talking smooth body flow, smooth dancing. Three calls you need to keep in mind. Circulates, trades, folds. They set up body flow, and they set dancers up so they don't fail. Now, we've got a square here. I'm just going to take three calls. Uh, I'm going to use Dixie style to start with. I'll use a mainstream call and I'll use a couple of plus calls. And it doesn't matter what class you're teaching, a mainstream class, plus class. But three things you need to know. First of all, 
as you're calling when you start your class or when you start the evening, maybe you've got some weaker dancers out there. Uh, you have to be aware of three things. What kind of dancers are you dealing with um, when you, you're trying to do a new call or you're working Dixie style as we're going to work here? What does the call do and what are the mechanics of that call? What are the mechanics of the call? So let's just do this. Let's uh, have the sides, if you would. Sides, just step forward and face your corner and star through. And to set up a little flow, do a right and a left through. And here's what I'm talking about flow. Notice that the ladies are moving forward. They're, when they turn, they are moving forward. Ladies lead Dixie style to a wave. We've assumed we've taught this call. From right here, dancers almost always will get to this point. Here's where we break down. How many times have you heard this call left swing through right now? It is absolutely instant non-success instant and all you have to do is one of those three calls that I was just talking about boy trade left swing through girls run around the boy bend the line you're right back there watch how it flows when we we put it up to speed here holy yes sir Jack <laughs> Walk in the middle and they come right back. Get around on a three, turn the lady, ladies lead. Dixie style of an ocean wave, the boy trade. Left swing through. Girls run around boys. Bend the line, a walk in the middle and they come right back. Get around on a three, turn the girl, the ladies lead. Dixie style of an ocean wave, left swing through. See it? And all it takes to take that away is a trade. That's all it takes is a trade. Um, left swing through. Boys cross run. Girls trade. Okay. Again, all I'm, I'm doing there uh, is showing you another way to get out of this. Let's swing through. Boy run around a girl. Bend the line. Get her right on a three. Turn the lady there. Ladies lead. Dixie style of an ocean way. Boy trade. You don't need to do a left swing through, and when I initially teach uh, Dixie style to wave, I would not do that, the first tip especially. I want them to be able to concentrate only on the Dixie style. We've done that. Now, if I want to get out of that, I just had the boys trade, didn't I? Okay. I would have the boys cross run. Boys cross run. Ladies slide together. Ladies trade. Then swing through. Again, notice all I'm doing is circulate some trades. That's all I do. Boys run. Bend the line. Watch how it'll dance. Get her out on the three. Turn the girl. The lady sleep. Dixie style of an ocean wave. Boy trade. Boys cross run. Now the ladies trade in the middle. Then swing through. Boys trade. Those boys run around a lady. Let's Ferris wheel into the middle. The center is far through. And you back away. You're home. Notice it's nothing more than circulation trades. In this case, with the Dixie style, I use the trades. And if, if you're teaching your class, Dixie style is a very foreign movement, especially to people in class, because we are a right-handed oriented society. Everything we do is right-handed. And all the calls we've taught them up to that point are right hand calls so you have to be very very careful that when we start this left handed uh, ocean wave material that the thing you need to concentrate most on is dancer success and you do that by not giving them a chance to make a mistake uh, heads again just or sides again just step forward and face your corner star through do a right and a left through Ladies lead Dixie style. Got the boys in the center. The idea is you don't want to leave them in here long. They've got their Dixie style wave. I've accomplished my objective. Boy trade. Boy cross run. Ladies slide together. Ladies trade. I got them out of it. I got them comfortable. We've been dancing right hand stuff. You want them in it for a short time and get them out. But you get them out smoothly. Don't set them up for a fall. Um, 
error-free repetition, which is what he was talking about. Uh, flow for perfect practice. And the flow sets it up. Um, let's do this. Do a single hinge. Just turn a quarter. Now, the, another call that we use all the time is follow your neighbor and spread. We use it a lot. When you teach that in class, you teach it a lot. And again, this takes a trade to smooth it out. Let's follow your neighbor. Hand spread. Ladies trade. Okay? Uh, recycle. Come on around. We'll do it again. Touch a quarter, if you would, please. Follow your neighbor. Hand spread. Ladies trade. Notice how it smooths out your flow when you do something like that. Okay, uh, recycle. Pass to the center. Square through three. Alaman left. Okay, come back. Now, we've gotten into a mode, and I, I saw this at the National Convention a great many times last summer. We do follow your neighbor and spread, swing through. Now, I'm going to just put it on the speed and show you what the difference is. Heads, square through to four, go all the way around the ring you do. Touch one quarter with the outside two, follow your neighbor and spread, swing through. Now, we, we got away with that pretty good because they were looking for it. Uh, pardon? Yeah. Boys run around the girl. Ferris wheel. Into the middle of centers, pass through, touch quarter. Follow your neighbor, hand spread, swing through. Boy, run around a girl, Ferris wheel into the middle. You know, notice how much better this will be. Centers, pass through, touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor, hand spread. Ladies trade in the middle, swing through. Then the boy trade, boy runner on a girl. Then the line, he'll pass through with a wheel and deal center zoom. New centers go right on a three, turn the girl, center square through three. One, two, three, and out, and then a left to the corner. Come back, nominate back home. Now, I'm a, a real stickler on that type of thing. Why have we gotten into the mode of follow your neighbor and spread and swing through? One reason, singing call figures. It's easy. Uh, let's see. Heads, just uh, step forward and face your corner. Notice who the corner is right here. Touch the quarter. Follow your neighbor and spread. Swing through. Boy run. Ferris wheel. Pass through. Who are you looking at? It was easy, but for who? A caller. Who are we calling to? Well, we're calling to the dancers. And we should be thinking about them. Now, how can I resolve this sucker in a hurry? You need to think about the dancers. We are there to entertain them, not to save ourselves a lot of work. And there are ways to do this. And I realize it takes a little effort then to create a singing call that will put the proper body flow to the very same call. And yeah, there are. But but the point is, a lot of guys don't take the time or the effort to research into finding a singing call. And, and Jack, I'll just have you guys uh, go back home. And then I'll, I'll show you a couple of different suggestions you might use. Head square through the four. All the way around the ring you go. Get around on the three. Turn the ladies there. Touch a quarter. Follow your neighbor and spread. Ladies trade in the middle. Then swing through. And the boys run around a girl. Boys fold in front of this girl. Swing in the corner. From the ladies to step or two and you'll be home. There's one instance of how you can smooth out follow your neighbor and spread. And it's not the same old stuff. It's not the same old stuff. Yet it smooths out the choreography and gives them a success to their dancing. You take away their mistakes with smooth choreography. Uh, and again, I, I cannot reiterate enough times, use trades, circulates, folds. They really add to what you can do and how you can do it. 
Yeah, one more thing just to show you what a fold to do. Uh, side couples, uh, step forward, face your corner, star through. Do a right and left through. Ladies lead Dixie style to an ocean wave. And again, boy trade. A little while ago I had the boys cross run, but why can't the boys cross fold? Boys cross fold, star through. What do we have? Got lines. The idea is be able to work this choreography. Be aware. What does this call do? What can I do after I get there? How can I make it smooth? Because your dancers will come back in the door for lessons, for the club dance, for the festival. If you can get them successfully through this choreography, I, I maintain most dancers break down not because they didn't know the call, but because the call was probably not presented as well as it could have been. We didn't set them up for success. Uh, one aside here before I get off this thing, uh, Jerry mentioned the standard applications book. He happens to be the one who's been working on creating this standard application book. And I publicly would like to thank him because I've had all the rewrites being on the board. He's done a really nice job, and I'd like you to give him a nice hand for it. Very nice. Okay, Daryl? Thank you. Ready to dance? Not that you haven't been dancing, mind you. We do have one page up here that's titled, My Favorite Bad Figure. Tell them who the author is? Gee, I have no idea. Now, I wrote this uh, several years ago and have been thinking about rewriting it because there's so much new material that's come out. <laughs> Square your sets. I love this figure. Don't talk to the caller. You bound in the park, in the corner, to the hips, up to the middle, then back, swing through. Boys run around the curve. You bend the line and bend and pass through the touch your quarter. Swing through the out of the other one. Boys trade. Girls trade. Swing through. Boys run around the girl, then a flutter of a wheel. Now past the ocean. Boys run, bend the line of the Do a Dixie style of an ocean wave. Left swing through. See everybody tag the line all the way through the face of right. Couples circulate. Do a half tag the line. Swing through when they get there now. The centers run to a Ferris wheel. Boys in the middle pass through. Touch quarter. Swing through the outside too. Spin your time. Fan the time. Boys circulate. Girls trade. Girls circulate. Swing through down the way and then the boys run around the girl. Couples circulate. Then the couples trade. Then the couples circulate. Then the couples trade. Then a Ferris wheel. Well, this centers pass through, star through the outside too, and bend the line, move to the middle and back. <laughs> right on up through, turn them. Well, pass through for the wheel and deal. Zoom. In the middle, square do three quarters, round it in. Right on up through the outside too, turn the girl and dive through. In the middle, pass through, star through, slide through, dive through. Flutter wheel. Slide through in the middle. Do a half square through. Alaman lamps. Square them up. I know you don't have your corner or your partner back, but that's why. It works. No, uh, certainly that isn't everything. Couldn't possibly be everything that could be wrong with the square. But I. Could we take a few minutes and analyze what happened here? Just pick it apart as much as we can. Uh, started right out with the heads swing through. Go ahead, heads swing through. Now that's, and the boys run. 
and bend the line. Now, if you have one square with lots of floor space, that might not be too bad. If you have a crowded hall, to have that ocean wave across the center doing that much action through the center of the set is not going to be all that wonderful. And today's choreography would prefer that you dance them to the side couple and get the side couples active rather than having that much going on in the center of the set with the others standing and watching. Uh, centers pass through, touch a quarter, and swing through. What do you think, gang? Well, yeah, it's a right, right. You touch a quarter, you turn a quarter by the right, and then you immediately expect them to turn another half by the right, don't you? Uh, so it's a little bit of overflow, a little bit of overflow there. Uh, let's have the boys trade, the girls trade, and swing through. What happened? The girls had to turn half by the right twice in a row. No real reason to do that kind of material. Uh, boys run around the girls and do a flutter wheel. And, of course, not real slick for the girls. <laughs> But we did all right, didn't we, guys? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah, right. We did good. No. Uh, as Jerry said earlier, uh, set them up for the flow. Uh, have a courtesy turn something that's going to get the girls moving in the right direction for that flutter wheel. Uh, the same as what he did in the Dixie style doing ocean wave there. Okay, past the ocean. Boys run and bend the line. You never have the ends run and bend the line. Never have the ends run and bend the line. Pass the ocean. What might you do there? Boys run. Boys trade. Bend the line. Maybe something like that. Was that better? At least it sets up some flow there, doesn't it? Dan? What did you say about the trades? Don't talk to me. I got the microphone now. <laughs> My record. <laughs> Pass the ocean. Remember, I'm the dad. Yes. <laughs> Boys run. Boys trade. Bend the line, sender, Dixie style of an ocean wave. Not too bad, is it? Left swing through. Would have been nice if we'd have had the boys trade before that left swing through. Tag the line. To the right. Now, is that wrong? That tag the line? Is, is it legally wrong? No. It, what did, what, how did it feel? At this speed? Not bad. For, first, time, first time we did it. Yeah. No, but when, when we did it the first time, it was not wonderful, was it? So legitimate does not always mean that uh, it's good, right? Okay, uh, we did a face right. Couple of circulate, if you would, please. Half tag the line. Find your new wave and swing through. The centers run. And the Ferris wheel. Now, the lines may have been just a little bit close together. Uh, the two sets of two face lines might have been just a little bit close together. Requires a little adjusting on that. Not real bad, but it could, you know, a little bit of... Uh, thought would have had you put them in a better position. Boys pass through, touch a quarter with the outside, and swing through. Here again, that same overflow that we experienced earlier, right? Spin the top. Fan the top. That's overflow. Boys circulate, and the girls trade. And the girls circulate. Who's getting busy? Girls? Oh, well, it's all right then. You all right, guys? Okay. No problem. <laughs> Swing through. Boys run around the girls. Couples circulate. Couples trade. Couples circulate. Couples trade. Couples circulate. Yeah. Do it again, yeah. Ferris wheel. Centers pass through and star through the outside too and bend the line and bend the line and bend the line. One's good, three has to be better. 
Right and left through. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Zoom. Square through three quarters. To a right and left through. But I wanted to call more. That makes it legal, doesn't it? To use two right hands in a row. You can do a left and right through. <laughs> Don't talk to the caller. Don't talk to Dive through. Pass through. Star through the outside, too. Slide through. Dive through. Now, that's one I see a lot of, a slide through to a dive through. For some reason, uh, we've got some callers out there that said, hey, I'm not going to mess around with having to decide when it's proper to use a slide through and a star through. It's easier just to use slide through all the time, and then I don't have to make those decisions up there. I know that they're not going to have to use the same hand twice in a row, so I'm not going to star through and right and left through. I'm going to slide through and right and left through, and I'll just do away with star through. All it is is a slide through with hands anyway, huh? And this is what you get. You get a slide through and a dive through, a slide through and a flutter wheel, or a slide through and any number of other things there that require a little bit of handhold. We still need to retain some handhold, some touching movements out there. All right. Uh, flutter wheel in the center. Centers pass through, star through, slide through, dive through, flutter wheel. Not wonderful. Not wonderful. There again, set up the flow. The idea of having the flutter wheel in the center of the set to begin with, it's a crowded area, especially if the floor is crowded. You need more space than that to do a flutter wheel. Better you do your flutter wheels from lines. Uh, centers pass through. Even with proper flow, do a right and left through and do a flutter wheel. If you had a crowded floor, this is not going to be wonderful. It takes a lot of space on a floor to execute those flutter wheels from an eight-chain through formation. Um, no. Stay out of this, Chuck. <laughs> okay. Um, right and left through, if you would, please. Veer to the left and do a Ferris wheel. In the center, slide through and half square through. And do an Alaman left. Of course, wrong hand. It's an obvious thing to uh, try to make make a point of that. But what you will want to do is make a point of looking at your material ahead of time. Know ahead of time. Push checkers. Look at your dolls. Uh, know ahead of time what hands they're going to be using. What hands are going to be available. What direction they're going to be turning. These things are very important if you're going to have smooth dancing. Uh, don't be surprised when uh, you're standing up there calling and uh, look down and see something that uh, does not look wonderful. Uh, stay aware of those things. Make a mental note or sit down and write it down after the tip. Go find out a way to do that uh, combination of movements that does flow, that is smooth, that's going to allow the dancers to dance without any real problems. Uh, the, the one thing that I would say is uh, uh, use your recovery calls. Keep your floor nice and smooth. Uh, things like balances, dose of those, right and left throughs or movements that you can plug into your choreography when your floor starts to get a little crumbly out. Uh, I, frequently I'll have dancers come up and say, hey, how do you know when we make a mistake? Boy, you always catch us when we do something wrong. Uh, well, you get used to looking over a floor, no matter how many dancers you have, and the floor is doing this very nicely out there. They're dancing along to the music, and all of a sudden, one square does this. You know, your eye goes, bam, just like that. And it isn't that you have the ability to know exactly what's going on in every square on the floor at all times. Uh, but that same thing that happens, if that floor is going along like this, and then all of a sudden the whole floor does that, 
then something that you call, chances are, some combination that you put together there is not wonderful. You had your turn. It does not happen to Daryl very often, but I, I know Daryl pretty well. When it does happen, Daryl has a way out of this. He'll say, smooth. <laughs> Never happens to Daryl. <laughs> yes, it does. One of the nicest things about being a... Uh, quote unquote sight caller is I am watching the dancers all the time. I get to see when something doesn't look right and it gets me right about there. If I see something that uh, uh, doesn't flow, I know it immediately and I'll tell you what, I try to rectify the problem immediately. I don't let it go any further. Uh, kids, I know you're tired of standing. Why don't you sit? Thank you very much. How about a nice hand for our demonstration sport? They done good. They did very well. Uh, some other things that are going to affect the smooth flow of the dancing is, of course, timing. Make sure that your uh, calls are timed properly right from the start. We're talking about teaching new dancers. When do you start teaching your new dancers uh, smooth dancing? Immediately. Immediately. The minute they step out on the floor, about the first thing you're going to teach them is circle left, isn't it? So we teach them the proper hand holds. We teach them the proper facing directions. We teach them how to shuffle to the music, how to move to the music. We set the tempo of the record just right so they're not running or they're not dragging. Uh, the smooth dancing is taught right from the start. You don't wait. You don't put it off. If you put it off, they develop habits. So you start right up front, spend a little bit of extra time that it's going to take to get them to dance smoothly uh, and with proper styling. Now, that's not to say that they're not going to go ahead and do an arm swing do -so -do later, but uh, they are going to break rules on their own, especially once they get out into the square dance world. But right up front, you start teaching properly. As the seed is sown, so grows the weed. Who said weed? <laughs> oh, we've, we've got a quick bunch here. You're, you're not going to sing, are you? Okay. Didn't like my record. Okay. Yes. I mentioned dance tempos. Dan dance tempos do have a uh, very important role to play in smooth dancing. The dance tempos today range from 126 to 130 metronome beats per minute, the average being 128. 128 beats per minute is a very comfortable dance tempo for today's choreography. A little bit faster is going to be just a little bit uh, uh, more rushed. A little bit slower is going to feel just a little bit draggy. You're going to have to take a look at your crowd and decide uh, how old they are or uh, what they're used to dancing. That's a very important thing. Did you have something to slip in that's pertinent to what? Oh, you can wait. <laughs> yes. To the mic. This is Chuck Jordan. He never let, likes to let you know who he is, but... Um, just a couple of things. I've noticed a number of travel, traveling callers are, are trying to make everything very, very smooth. So you flip your diamond, you automatically know the girls are going to trade. And I'm thinking about what we were doing here, follow your neighbor, and the girls trade. Well, the girls don't have to just trade. They can fan the top. They can hinge. There's a whole number of things that the girls can do. So don't let your dancers get into that habit, that bang, they've traded and all of a sudden you've got a guest caller, he calls, follow your neighbor, and spread, and bang, they trade it. That's one of the things. And something you forgot for your sheet, for, for overflow. Uh, couples trade, couples circulate, couples trade, couples circulate, couples trade, Ferris wheel, sweep a quarter, gotta have that. Right. 
Alrighty. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Um, one thing that I, I have noticed watching other callers, uh, we have pretty much three different types of delivery that's being used today. Three different types. One is continuous flow. The dancers never stop. It goes from movement to movement to movement. The second is what I call stop and go timing, where they do a movement, they stop, do a movement, stop, do a movement, stop, do a movement, stop. Uh, the third, none of you would do anyway, so I'm not even going to bring it up. It's terrible. It's, it, there is no timing to it. It's uh, impossible to dance. But it does exist. I run into that one too. I, I gave some thought to this because I knew that we were going to have this session here uh, on smooth dancing. And I said, well, gee, you know, I watch these guys call this stop and go timing. Now, I, I don't call it. I try to call continuous flow dancing. That's the way I like to dance, so that's the way that I call. But I watch the delivery of these other guys. Watch the dancers. The dancers are dancing smoothly. Uh, I'm not going to say that that's not good because the dancers are enjoying what's going on. They are dancing smoothly. What they've done is they've locked into the rhythm that that guy is delivering, that material, and they've come to expect it to come to them just like that. And uh, they're dancing very effectively that way. Uh, it's something that I'm going to be watching more here in the next year and uh, analyzing and finding out just exactly where they are delivering their calls and how it, how it is working for them. Uh, but I have run in to groups where they're used to dancing in that manner and all evening long I'll have dancers coming up to me saying boy you call fast man you call fast I don't call fast I don't speed up a record I put it on 128 sometimes I slow a record down never speed it up for a normal dance but I do call continuous uh, I'm sure that the dancers that are used to dancing to me, if they went to that dancer, they'd say, boy, stop going, stop go, herky-jerky. His dancers are very happy. I'm not saying right and wrong. I, I think maybe uh, in many ways, both ways are right. Uh, you can argue with that if you like. Uh, but uh, I'm going to keep an open mind about it. But Jerry had something. Oh, I'm sorry. Jerry Reed. The other Jerry, uh, just just a couple of points, uh, and uh, we saw some very good examples uh, that Daryl put together there of uh, unsmooth choreography. Uh, what I like to to do is to to stress, as Daryl said, that we can teach these smooth dancing skills from the very beginning. Teach the shuffle step. Uh, teach uh, include those smooth dancing skills as we're teaching the new dancers. And I, I mentioned the uh, uh, example before of Four Ladies Chain. When, you're, when, when we're teaching Four Ladies Chain, let the fellows know to anticipate, to turn slightly, to reach out with that left hand, to smoothly courtesy turn the ladies when they come to them. On the, on the all four ladies flutter wheel or, or a flutter wheel, for, to have the, the gentleman anticipate the arrival of that lady so that he's ready to start moving, perhaps start moving just before she gets there to flow into it very smoothly. Uh, and finally, we've, we've heard uh, for years, uh, when I first started calling and, and for years I always heard, never use the same hand twice. Don't ever use the same hand twice. And I saw a lot of combinations where in fact we do that and it's very smooth and, and I tried to figure out why that is. Well, if we take a move, uh, again I wish I had the square, but if we have like a zero box, uh, touch a quarter, scoot back. Now those end facers are using the same hand twice and yet it's smooth. And why is that? Because of hand availability. So it's not necessarily hand usage, but hand availability that we, that we need to take a look at. Uh, also, one of the examples that uh, 
that my better half came up with is uh, twirling. How many times have you tur seen, and primarily I would think in, in singing calls, where we, we meet our partner, we twirl, we swing, then we twirl, and where's the lady going after the twirl? She's twirling off to that direction. Then what's the next thing that we call? Circle left. So she's twirling out there, and then she gets yanked back to circle left. So uh, I know that they're going to do that. What, what might be a suggestion is during a smoothness styling workshop is to let them know that that's going to happen, and perhaps they can make a conscious decision not to do that. That's all the points I have. I think Jerry's got another finish up. Now, I think we need to have some time for uh, questions. Do you have any questions to address to the panel here? We have uh, several callers in our area, you who, uh, and I'd like your opinion on this, the up and down music contribution to smooth dancing. The up and down, oh, the volume control. Uh. <laughs> okay, now, Daryl's a good friend, and Daryl is one of the guys that does use his music up and down. I do not. Um, you have people that say that bothers them, uh, yet you have a lot of people that don't. Uh, especially when we're in a teaching mode, we pull the music down further to talk and stuff. I don't know. I think it has to do with personal preference. Um, there are pros and cons both ways. I will say something on that. Uh, Yes, I do. I run it up and down. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been known to shut it completely off uh, when I'm delivering a command. I call in a tremendous number of halls throughout the year, a lot of different halls. And the acoustics in the halls are not always wonderful. And there's many, many, many times that uh, the voice is fighting with the music just to be distinguished, not heard, because uh, being heard, all I have to do is turn up volume on both of them. You're going to hear both of them. But I've always felt that it was a lot more important that the commands come across than the music. But I still like to have the music there. So the halls uh, dictate that to me a little bit. I've found that I, I have more success getting the message across to the dancers if my voice is not competing with the music. Also, uh, Hearing aids were brought up the other day. Sometimes, if the voice and the music are set too closely, what you wind up with is kind of a white noise. The uh, hearing aids might have a tendency to kind of balance it all out, and I don't want that kind of a balance. I want to have the voice well above the music, but at the same time, I still like to hear what's happening. Now, if, if a guy is raising the music and covering up the commands, I'll agree with you. It's a bad thing. But as long as uh, the music is there uh, enough to be heard and appreciated and keep the dance rhythm going, uh, and the music is not interfering with the delivery of the calls or the dancer's ability to hear and understand the calls, uh, I don't see a, a tremendous problem with it. Like Jerry says, I've had dancers come up and say, Gosh, I wish you wouldn't do that. But on the other hand, I've had dancers come up and say, Man, you really crank it on. You know, it's great. Love your music. So uh, what are you going to do? You're not going to please everybody no matter what you do. It's a tool. Uh, any tool can be overused or abused. Try to use it effectively if you're going to use it. Uh, I hope that answered it without... Uh, got any other questions? Comments, suggestions, criticisms. Yes, uh, to the microphone, please. I'm Nani Maxfield from Santa Clara, no, San Jose, California, Santa Clara area. Um, <clears throat> I have a pet peeve, and I've been talking to several callers, and they say they do it all over. The body flow, uh, you have lines facing in. They've actually pro probably bent, just now bent the line. Or the flow is either they're going to do a flutter wheel or a pass through or something to that flow, and they think it's so cute when they go let down a man, then the whole square falls down because all of a sudden you know you're not your anticipation is 
that the movement is going to go forward. But it doesn't. All of a sudden, you're moving forward because that next move, you know it's going to be there, and you yell the left out of man. And I think it's terrible. It stinks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd never do that myself. How about you? We'll let Ken answer that. Uh, I agree that that is that, that that's a very unsmooth uh, sequence. And the reason that it is is because something called instinctive anticipation, where we always tend to move or work with the people we're facing. But also, uh, in, in calling uh, smoothly, we need to recognize also that there are times when the gimmick of that will outweigh the, the smoothness that we're trying. But we should always strive to put as much smoothness as we can. I think we have this gentleman here that... Dave Bloom from Port Coquitlam, B.C. Uh, this applies more to singing calls than patter. Um, I've heard several arguments about promenading halfway around after they promenaded home from the previous figure. Now you're getting them to promenade halfway around again to go into a square through four or something like that and starting the figure over again. I'd like your comments on that. Whether you think that is good to do or whether you start them off going right in to do something rather than keep on promenading again. Yes. <laughs> I've got an answer for everything. Did you notice that? Yeah, it works for me. Uh, I don't think you... I, 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 understand, I understand what you're saying, that uh, I just promenaded 16 beats. Why should I have to promenade another eight? Uh, I don't think you're going to change that. Uh, well, what's the alternative? heads square through or heads pass through or something like that, or heads right and left through or something like that. Uh, and if, if you never did the promenade half in a singing call, then you'd miss that too, wouldn't you? I, I might say, don't do it every time. Don't start every, don't have a promenade half in every one of your singing calls. I, I would just try to get as much variety as possible. And... Uh, that's my own opinion, of course. And that's one nice thing about that kind of a uh, comment. Uh, your opinion is yours, mine's mine. We can make our own decisions on how we're going to program our dances. Uh, we all try to do that effectively. And, and one more comment on yours. Yes, that comes under the same heading as square through three quarters. There's your corner, do si do, or something like that. Uh, some callers can get away with that and make it fun. Not too many, granted, but some can. Uh, it's like some guys being able to tell slightly off-color jokes and get away with it, and other callers or other people would tell the same joke and be offensive. Uh, you have to know who and what you are at the same time. And, uh, of course, doing too much of anything is not a good idea. Too much of anything is not a good idea. Try to be very judicious about how you use any kind of material like that. We have time for two more questions. Not, not just you got to wait, uh, Chuck. Back to the situation of lines and looking for your corner. If a caller is knowing what he's going to do, there is no reason why he can't say, "Hey, look for your corner; it's going to come," or some kind of expression two moves ahead of what he's going to come up for. And the people are looking like this: "Where's my corner? Where's my corner? Where's my corner?" That's where you, you get know, the, that, that, That's where you could get away with it, and somebody else maybe couldn't, uh, and put a little bit of showmanship in it at the same time. Quick, com a quick comment on the last two questions uh, concerning the bend the line element left, and also concerning this promenade again. I think the caller's timing of his command is the most important thing. If you all of a sudden get home, you're starting to twirl, and then they say start to promenade again, it's kind of rough. If you can time it so they can make it a continuous thing, it's not so bad. It's the same with the bend the line. If the timing's early enough that they are not starting up to the middle and back, and you can get that left element in, that timing is everything. And you watch the good callers, and you'll see they get away with it very, very nicely. The others, they're searching. So watch the good ones. Again, yes. All right. 
suffice it to say that please, when you start your beginner's classes, start teaching smooth dancing immediately. Watch what you're calling, study what you're calling. How about a nice hand for our two panelists, Jerry Reed and Jerry Junk. Thank you for coming. Catch you later.